Hey there, fellow gardener. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's as rewarding as it is delicious. How to grow broccoli from seed all the way to harvest. Whether you're a seasoned gardener or just starting out, this video is packed with tips and tricks to guide you through the entire process. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Jera, and I teach others how to garden and grow food with a little bit of beekeeping and raising backyard chickens thrown in. This video is one of many grow guides that can be found on my channel where I share my knowledge about growing food and other edible plants. So make sure you subscribe to my channel that way you don't miss any of my tutorials. I always like to begin my garden guides with a discussion on cultivar selection because when you go to buy seeds you're going to be shown a huge variety of different types of broccoli. To pick the best variety for your garden, there are a few things you should know. There are two kinds of broccoli, heading and sprouting. Heading types form one big head at the middle of the plant. This is what you typically see at the grocery store. Once you harvest that head, most varieties will continue to produce side shoots, which are very small compared to that first initial head, but just as edible. Sprouting types of broccoli don't form one big head in the middle, instead they form a lot of side shoots. The standard grocery store broccoli is green in color, but it also comes in purple, like purple peacock broccoli or neon green like with romanesco broccoli. I usually don't find the purple or neon green romanesco broccoli at the grocery store so that is why I love to grow them myself. Romanesco which is technically a hybrid between broccoli and cauliflower has a very unique fractal geometrical cone shape that you just don't find in other vegetables. A pretty standard broccoli head is about four to five inches across. Some can get larger than that, like a hybrid called Godzilla, which can grow heads that are six to seven inches across. Some cultivars are said to be more heat tolerant than others, which is a big deal, especially if you're a Southern USA gardener with mild winters, as in your area doesn't get snow and your ground doesn't freeze. It's difficult to grow broccoli in warm climates because the heat triggers the plants to bolt or go to flower and produce seed instead of forming a tight and uniform head of broccoli. Once this starts happening, there's no going back. It's best to just cut the plant out and grow something else or allow it to flower because the bees go crazy over broccoli flowers. Finding forage during the winter is kind of hard for them, so leave those flowers there. Or if it's an heirloom, just save seeds and try growing it again next season. I'll be honest with you though, in all of my years growing broccoli, none of them, not even the hybrids display a decent heat tolerance in zones nine and up. The only one that I can say is definitely heat tolerant is Piracicaba Brazilian Sprouting Broccoli, which is my favorite and top recommended broccoli type thing to grow for gardeners with warm winters. If you're really struggling to grow nice large heads or crowns because your broccoli plants just keep bolting, then try growing Piracicaba or some other type of sprouting broccoli. And the reason why it's easier is because you don't have to worry about the whole bolting before growing a nice big crown thing, just saying. Lastly, the cultivars also differ according to maturity date or how many days from transplanting into the garden is the head ready for harvest. On average, you can expect it to take 90 days to start harvesting. However, Desico, which I'm growing right here, is an early maturing variety needing around just 70 days. The heads of Desico are on average smaller than other types of broccoli, but the benefit is that it's early producing, which helps me make sure I harvest something, anything, before the heat of spring returns and ruins my broccoli crop. Plus, after you harvest the main crown, it continues to produce quite a few side shoots for a few more weeks. Another early maturing cultivar is early purple sprouting, which starts producing in about 59 days from transplanting. In terms of flavor and texture, they all seem to be pretty much the same. I think Romanesco has a slightly more crisp texture, but nothing too significantly different. If you feel that a certain broccoli cultivar's flavor and texture truly are different and worth growing to experience, please comment below. All right, so let's talk about sowing the seeds. In general, it takes about 12 weeks for these to be ready to transplant from seed. So you're gonna backtrack 12 weeks from whatever your target date is of transplanting them into the garden. If you're in garden zones seven and below, like the colder zones, you're gonna transplant these out into your garden as soon as your last average spring frost date has passed. Therefore, you have to grow these indoors 12 weeks before that. If you're in garden zones eight and up that have very hot summers and very mild winters, like me here in Florida, you're gonna plant these in the fall. It can be kind of tricky trying to figure out what month during fall should you be transplanting these out? Because if they're exposed to too much warmth, they'll just bolt or the seedlings will stay super tiny. So what I recommend is that you go to a website called plantmaps.com, you put in your zip code, and at the very bottom, there's a chart that will show your average maximum high temperature per month and the lowest temperature per month. Locate the month during fall where the max average high temperature is at 85 or below. Using my garden as an example, the first month where that occurs is the month of October. Therefore, I'm going to backtrack 12 weeks from October, which lands me in the month of July or maybe even early August. The weather outside is hitting 90 degrees or even sometimes 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. 
and that will definitely stunt your little seedlings. So in all cases, pretty much, you're gonna be sowing these from seed inside. And I have a full tutorial showing you my whole indoor seed starting setup, all the supplies and things that I recommend, along with expert tips on how to grow, you know, lush, beautiful, healthy transplants. So I will link that below in the description. But in general, I just take a small little mini greenhouse and I attach some grow lights or shop lights. A lot of times I use shop lights that are 5,000 Kelvins or higher, that's for the daylight range, and I just zip tie them to the bottom of the shelves. I put that inside of my house where the temperature stays around 72 degrees Fahrenheit and they germinate and grow very well for me. Remember, as soon as anything germinates, it needs a bright source of sunlight to continue growing. If you notice that your seedlings are kind of leaning towards one direction or very thin, that means they're stretching, trying to reach for some light. So make sure you just provide a nice bright light source for them. All right, so now that you know when you're supposed to sow your seeds, let me show you how to do it. For anything in the brassicas family, I really like to use four inch pot sizes. This will house them for the whole 12 week growing period so I don't have to waste time potting up. I find that seeds in the brassicas family tend to germinate very well, so I'm not concerned about having to sow them densely and then thin out you know, the weakest seedlings and all that kind of thing. I literally just put two little seeds per four inch container and trust me, one out of two of those seeds are gonna germinate. I just put one seed on either side of this little container, cover it with a tiny bit of soil, like a quarter inch, not very much. Pat it down so the seeds are locked in place and then keep this nice and moist. You should see germination in around three to five days if you have good seed. This seedling right here is 11 weeks old. So we're almost at that 12 week mark but they've grown so fast for me that I'm gonna start planting them into my garden right now. When the seedlings sprout, the first set of two leaves are called cotyledons. Those are just something the plant hurries up and pushes out so it can start photosynthesizing. But that's not the final or like true leaves that represent the plant. The next set of two leaves is now what we call the true leaves. They should look something more similar to this. As soon as you see the true leaves, you can start fertilizing and I highly recommend that you do that with your seedlings so that way they grow as fast as possible and they get nice and big like this. I like to use a liquid fertilizer for all of my seedlings and I just mix it at half the strength of whatever the directions say. So for example, if the directions say mix two tablespoons per gallon of water, I'm just gonna put one tablespoon per gallon of water because you don't wanna risk overdosing your little seedlings. And in 12 weeks, they should look very similar to this. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to transplant them. I just so happen to be growing a lot of my brassicas in grow bags this season, but you can follow the same techniques for transplanting no matter how you're growing them, whether that be in the ground, in containers, in raised beds, it's all the same. First, find the best spot to grow them in your garden. They do require full sun. If you're in the south, like me here in Florida, where full sun is like extra, extra sun, then it's okay to plant these in a spot that get a lot of bright morning sun, but some afternoon shade. That will really help decrease the amount of bolting and just help these plants survive and produce a little bit longer for you in your garden. Make sure you're growing in some decent soil, something that is rich in organic matter because they do require a lot of nutrients to output and produce for you. You're probably gonna ask me, what did I use to fill up all these grow bags? To be honest with you, I go to my local Home Depot and I buy the cheapest bags of compost that I can possibly find. I don't know the name of the brand, but they're a white and yellow bag. They're super cheap. I've been using it for years and I don't mix it with anything else. I just put straight compost in here. I have come to realize through comments from a lot of you fellow gardeners that you cannot find that same brand of compost at your local Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you're shopping. So just know you might not be able to find it. If that's the case, use whatever you can find. You can use potty mix or even garden soil mix. If they're too crammed together, they really can't expand and grow nice, big, bushy plants, and that's going to reduce production. If you're planting in the ground or in rows, space them anywhere between 12 to 18 inches apart so each plant has enough room. Since I'm growing in grow bags, just eyeball it. <laughs> These are gonna be anywhere between maybe 15 inches apart. This is a 10 gallon size grow bag, and quite honestly, I'm just gonna put one of these plants per 10 gallons of grow bag. Dig a hole the same size as your pot and always, always put some kind of a fertilizer in the planting hole. Since I have tons of this Espoma brand, tomato tone almost at all times here in my garden. I use it to fertilize all of my tomatoes. So I constantly have a ton of this available, but just use whatever granular fertilizer you prefer. Mix it in with the soil here so those roots don't come in direct contact with that fertilizer. It can burn your plant. And then I'm gonna add a big handful of blood meal. This is an organic fertilizer that's really high in nitrogen. It's gonna help these little seedlings start putting on a lot of new growth. Again, the goal is to have nice big size plants with lots of leaves. Since this is organic, I don't really have to worry about measuring. It's not gonna 
overdose or burn my plants. If you're using synthetic stuff, then follow the directions. Once planted, water this in really well so that this plant can start getting established. When it comes to watering, you don't want to overwater. If you notice that the leaves are turning yellow, the number one culprit for that is you're probably overwatering. If you're not sure if you should water, try the finger test. Just stick your finger into the soil. If it's dry to your second knuckle, it could use some water. Since I'm in Florida and it rains here a lot and it's very humid and wet most of the year, I really like growing things in grow bags, especially things that are kind of very susceptible to root rot if there's just too much water or moisture. So these grow bags help a lot. The con of growing in grow bags is that the soil does dry out a lot quicker than other ways of growing things. But I use that to my advantage here in Florida. These really grow great in here. Just make sure you monitor the soil level though, because if it does dry out, that's going to obviously affect the growth of your brassicas and it causes issues when they're trying to form their heads or crowns at harvest time. And that's it, in a couple weeks, you should start seeing new growth. It's been one month since I planted all of this broccoli in these grow bags. As you can see, they put on a lot of new growth. Starting around three or four weeks after transplanting, you're gonna start fertilizing them about once every 10 days or so. I like to sprinkle in about one eighth of cup of an organic granular fertilizer at the base of each plant every 10 to 14 days. This is a Spoma brand Garden Tone. It's an organic granular fertilizer, so it's really safe to use. I only recommend that you fertilize this often with organic fertilizers only. That way you don't risk burning your plants. If you use the synthetic stuff, you can risk burning your plants therefore follow the directions on the package you can also use the water soluble type of fertilizers there are some organic ones available if not get a synthetic one and just fertilize per the directions the main goal when fertilizing broccoli is to keep the nutrients consistent that way the plant has rapid growth and the thicker the stem the bigger that head of broccoli will be i will keep fertilizing every 10 days or so for the first two months of growth in my garden after that i switch to something higher in potassium and phosphorus which support the production of the flowers because that is basically what we were eating the unopened flowers of a broccoli crown i will fertilize about once every three or four weeks until the end of my season all right so your plants have been growing in the garden for a couple months let's talk about the common pests and diseases that you may encounter the number one pest that i get are aphids they start congregating on the lower leaves and move up the plant spray with neem oil or organic insecticidal soap. If you see lots of ants on your plants too, then they are farming the aphids because they like to eat a sweet honeydew type substance that the aphids secrete. So set up some ant traps if needed. You might get cabbage or pickle worms or any other kind of worm that likes to eat leaves from things in the brassicas family. If it's a small infestation, you can easily pick them off the plants, but here in Florida, there's no such thing as a small worm infestation. So I spray with BT, at the very first sign of worm damage to quickly knock the population down. As each day goes by, the population increases, which will require more spraying, so just stay on top of it. I will link below to the same BT spray that I use. You could also cover your plants with row covers, but for this to be successful, you have to make sure it's sealed, so there is no way for worms to get in there. I know myself, and I'm not good at staying on top of row covers like that to make sure it's effective, so for me, BT is the way to go. You might start to see yellow spots or brown dried up sections on the leaves. This is one of many different types of leaf diseases. I like to remove the older leaves that are heavily infected to slow down the spread. It also helps to spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water to clean and disinfect the leaves. Never water your plants overhead because this keeps the surface of the leaves wet, which causes growth of leaf disease pathogens like powdery mildew, which is a fungus. It's approximately two months after I transplanted my broccoli. Today is actually Christmas Eve and I get to harvest my very first head of broccoli. So I wanted to show you guys how to know when they're ready to be harvested. Every day I come out here and I check the head. What I'm looking for is the moment when all of these tiny little flower buds start getting bigger, like they're about to start opening up. At that point, this broccoli plant is not going to put all its energy into developing a bigger head. That's pretty much as big as it's going to get. Instead, it now wants to flower. You want to harvest it before things start flowering for the best flavor and texture. Every day I come out here, I check it. Today I finally started seeing that these little flower buds are starting to separate a little bit. You really can notice it on the bottommost florets. Those are the ones that start separating and blooming first. So just check those bottommost florets. And if you see that the buds aren't as tight anymore, they're starting to separate a little bit, it's time to harvest it. This is as good as it's gonna get. Always use some scissors to cut them off. 
because you don't want to damage the plant. The majority of broccoli cultivars will continue producing side shoots, which you can continue to harvest until the whole plant just finally is done for the season. I'm going to use my scissors here to cut it right off the plant. It's probably like six or seven inches across. This is a good standard size head for a home backyard gardener. There are some cultivars that get on average bigger than this. They tend to be hybrids, but I really like growing my heirlooms, so that's what I stick to. I'm gonna eat this tomorrow for my Christmas dinner. Some people are asking me how far down do I like to cut? I like to follow the main stem all the way down until you hit a leaf node. This is a leaf node right here because this is where more sprouts are gonna grow out of. So if you cut it right here, that's gonna stimulate the plant to put energy into sprout production and another one should form out here. So I'm going to cut it right here above this first leaf node. After harvesting the main head, you can decide to remove the entire plant to plant something else in this spot or leave it for a few more weeks because they will continue producing side shoots. Harvest the side shoots frequently so the plant keeps producing more. If allowed to go to seed, the plant will think it's at the end of its life cycle and start to stop producing. I like to follow the side shoot down to where it connects to the main stem and cut it there so they are nice and long. The stems are really delicious. Actually, every part of the plant is edible, the stems, leaves, and flowers. If you would like to grow the same types of broccoli that I grow in my garden, you can find seeds on my website. And there you have it, a full and complete guide to growing broccoli from seed all the way to harvest. Thank you for coming along with me over the last few months as I grew out my winter broccoli crop, and I hope these tips will help you be successful growing it in your own garden. If you have any broccoli growing advice, please share in the comments because I learn just as much from you guys as you do from me. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up. That helps out my channel more than you know. Happy gardening, and I'll see you in the next video.